From Hollywood, Colgate Juice Powder presents The Mel Blanc Show, written by Mac Benoff, with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Hans Conried, Alan Reed, The Sportsman, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of The Voice of Bugs Bunny. Hey. What's up, Doc? Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mel playing his new character, Zookie. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> hi. And starring himself in person, Mel Blanc. Hiya, folks. <laughs> Conclusive proof that a young swain has fallen in love with his lady fair is when he begins to see in her the close features of his family. For instance, in the little town where Mel Blanc lives, we hear Henry Adams saying to his girlfriend, Susan, Gosh, Susan, you're awfully pretty. You look just like my sister. And in another part of town, Roy Davis is saying to his girl, You know, Shirley, you're lovely. You look just as my mother did when she was your age. And in the Colby house, where Mel Blanc is sitting with his girlfriend, Betty, Mel is saying... Gosh, Betty, you're very pretty. You look just like my uncle. Last week, Mel, in an attempt to save the Colby family from eviction, pretended he was a Viennese doctor. However, the plan didn't work, and now we find Mel and Betty in Mel's fix-it shop talking about the incident. Gosh, everything was going fine, too. Until the other doctor asked you where you studied. Yeah, and all I could think of was Prinja, Viking, Flute, and Gluten, in <laughs> Salzburg. <laughs> Can you imagine that guy never heard of a place called Salzburg? Oh, uh, by the way, Betty, I got a circular in the mail that your father might be interested in. Here it is. Oh, prefabricated housing. What does it say? Um, buy the Cracker Jack prefabricated house. Small, inconvenient, and poorly constructed. <laughs> this is the ideal type of housing for veterans. <laughs> It's all right for you to joke, but Father and I'll be living out in the street if something doesn't happen. Or maybe even a cellar. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, living in a cellar? Sure, your father's always throwing me down the steps. Now let's him try and throw me up. <laughs> Mel, stop talking like that. You know Father's beginning to like you. Why, just last night I heard him say, Mel, you can hang around the house all you want to. Yeah, but you didn't see him pointing to the rafter. <laughs> Speaking of the... Uh, here comes your father now. Oh, hello, Ben. Hello, Father. Mel Blank, you idiot. Hello, Mr. Colby. I gave you a cash register to fix for my supermarket, and what did you do? Oh, oh, I meant to ask you, Mr. Colby. I'm missing a few parts from an old slot machine. I know that's an incomplete. This morning, my cashier tried to ring up a dollar twenty. Well, what happened? He got three cherries straight across. <laughs> Gee, that's too bad. That's terrible. The next customer hit the jackpot. <laughs> oh, but I can't be angry today. The bank is giving me a big loan. I'll be able to buy our house and we won't be evicted. Father, that's wonderful. Yes, that is. If everything goes well when Banker Grimes comes to the house tonight, I think I can impress Banker Grimes and Betty can make a good impression on him. And you, Mel, can make a good impression, too. You really think so, Mr. Colby? Yes, on the sidewalk if you don't stay away from my house. <laughs> All right, Mr. Colby, I can take a hint. And I won't... Hey, wait a minute. Banker Grimes is a very social man. He'd be very impressed if you had some rich foreign relatives. I don't have any rich foreign relatives. You do now. I'm a good actor. I can do it. Huh? I'll be your rich foreign relative. You mean you... Uh... You want the house? Well, yeah. Well, you want to live in the street? That's the deal. Well, now that's what I call quick thinking. I'll do anything to get that loan. Oh, oh wait a minute. Here comes Professor Pochnik. Oh, hello, Professor Pochnik. Hello, hello. Well, if it ain't my four best friends, Mel, Betty, and Mr. Colby. And Professor Pochnik, that's only three. What am I, an enemy? <laughs> well, we have to go, Professor Pochnik. Nice to see you. Come on, Betty. See you at nine, cousin. Mel, why are you looking so down faced for a while? Oh, I'm always talking out of turn. Professor, I'm afraid I promised Mr. Colby the impossible. Mal, there is no such word in the dictionary like impossible. Impossible, that's a bad word. Forget it. Could be. That is a word. Che, u, a, la, de, be, e. Could be. Oh, but this is really impossible. I just told you there is no such word. You couldn't use it. Don't even think about the impossible. Now, what is the trouble? Well, I'm going to help Mr. Colby get a loan from Banker Grimes. So I got to make believe I'm some foreign relative who is rich and high class. That 
is impossible. <laughs> However, under Professor Patsnik's dramatic course, the impossible becomes could be. Now, I have two courses of teaching. The first is in ten easy lessons. And the other course? One hard lesson. <laughs> we try the hard one. Now, first, we are impersonating a tough guy. You are listen, wise guy, see? From whom you get your vodka from whom, ha, see? <laughs> now you do it. Okay. Give a listen, wise guy, see? From whom you're getting your vodka from whom, from whom, ha, huh? see? Ah, that's perfect. Now we try another type, the Western type. Western, yes. Coming here, tax, you all. <laughs> I'm a record of the hanker to fixing up that whole corral. Give a yippee hi-yay and a home on the gas rail. <laughs> Take it, pod. Uh, pod, uh, Mel, that's you. Uh, pod is Western talk for Rosler. <laughs> oh, all right. Coming here, tax you all. The... Oh, wait a minute, Professor. This is all American. Well, frankly, Mel, I'm foreigners. I am not so good. <laughs> but for you, I am trying. Now, make believe you are a count. The first thing you do is bow from the waist. Bow from the waist. Bow from the waist. I hope I do. All right. Uh, bow bow from, from the waist. I can't wait till tonight. Uh, wow from the base. The uh, booster from the base. You told me to powder, keep smiling the sky. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Girls won't go out with a certain chap. A breath of trouble, his handicap. And as so often happens, the victim does not suspect that he has this breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. Don't let it happen to you. Make it a daily must to do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten... Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice of any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Now, the sportsman Victor Miller and his orchestra with My Pretty Girl. My pretty girl, my pretty girl, I'm always dreaming of you. Oh, my pretty girl, my pretty girl, my darling, how I love you. Promise me, you will never leave me. Promise, promise, you will never leave me. Promise, promise, you will not deceive me. Oh, my pretty girl. Give me just one kiss, one sweet kiss, you won't live, for your tears bring such thrill to my lonely heart. Oh, my pretty girl, my pretty girl, I'm always dreaming of you. Oh, my pretty girl, my pretty girl, my darling, how I love you. Promise me you will never leave me, promise, promise, you will never greet me, promise, promise, you will not deceive me, oh. There's a young lovely lad so in love with a pretty man. When his arms hold her charms, he begins to sing words I like a bit. Oh, my pretty girl, my head's a whirl. You're sweeter than molasses. Oh, you Mr. Colby obtain a loan, Mel has promised to impersonate some rich foreign relatives, thereby hoping to impress Banker Grimes. 
Mel has left the fix-it shop to get the costumes he'll need. Meanwhile, the shop is in charge of his assistant, Zookie, who is now fixing a radio. Gee, uh, we, uh, uh, what a big radio. Hmm. It must be at least nine to be two. Uh, two uh, oh. uh, eight to uh, two. Uh, 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 six to uh, two. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's crystal sad. <laughs> Oh, oh, gee, it's got an automatic record to take, record to take, record to take, automatic record to take. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it, it plays one record at a time. <laughs> In a minute, now, let me see. Zuki, stay away from that radio. Look, Zuki, help me get into this costume. I got... Uh-oh. Mr. Cushing, my large president. Hello, there. I'm on the door. I'm boo boo Well, greetings, mighty potentate. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. What's the matter, mighty potentate? You look like you haven't slept a wink. Well, Mel, last night I had a terrible nightmare for four hours. And then you woke up? No, then I went to sleep. My wife turned on the other side. <laughs> yeah, the way that woman snores. Oh, oh, oh. Sounds like the last dregs of a seltzer bottle. <laughs> now I know why Richard won't open that door. <laughs> well, why don't you try using a clothespin? I did, Mel, but I couldn't squeeze her neck into that little opening. <laughs> Say, how'd you ever come to meet your wife, Mighty Potentate? Well, I'll tell you, Mel, it was a blind date. I'll never forget the first thing I said when I first saw her. What was that? Ah! <laughs> I get it, she was a scream, huh? <laughs> well, wasn't she insulted when you did that? Oh, no, no. She'd been out on blind dates before. <laughs> In fact, with her, a groan was a compliment. <laughs> you still didn't have to marry her, did you? <laughs> well, Mel, it was a rebound thing, you see? I've been going out with another girl. Oh, I'll never forget her. Every night I used to whisper in her ear, Gwendolyn, I adore you. Gwendolyn, you're my dream girl. Gwendolyn, I'm mad about you. But she left me because of one slight mistake. What was that? Her name was Emma. <laughs> well, I don't know why I'm standing here telling you all this. She just arrived out and I wanted to talk to <laughs> No, I know just how you feel, my potent <laughs> If I don't help Mr. Colby impress Banker Grimes tonight, the Colbys may move and I may lose Betty. Lucky boy. Well, don't joke, Mr. Cushing. Would you want to be single all your life? Ha! <laughs> well, I've got to be going now. I hope everything turns up all right at the Colby house. Well, thanks. Uh, where are you going? Well, I can do one of two things. I can go to the movies and see Duel in the Sun, or I can go home and fight in the shade. <laughs> Have a good time at the movies. Well, goodbye, Muddy Potentate. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. So long, Mel. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Well, now to get over to the Colby house with these costumes. Gosh, it's going to be quite a job impersonating a bunch of rich foreign relatives. <laughs> Betty, everything's going along fine. Yes, Father, and Mel should be here any minute. And if he does a good job with that foreign relative stuff, it should sink the deal. Oh, leave it to Mel, Father. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Mr. Guy, did you enjoy the dinner? Ah, it was delicious. <laughs> of uh, course, you didn't have to go to the trouble of baking a cake and having the icing sell out $8,000. <laughs> I got the point when the alphabet soup spelled out Polly. <laughs> yes. Now, I'm out the loan, Mr. Grimes. Um, oh, uh, have a cigar. Well, now, Mr. Colby, I think the loan will go through. A cigar? I take the whole box. Well, there's just one point that we have to clear up. <laughs> well, go on, have a cigar. But I think we can overcome the point and get your hands up that bottle. <laughs> The, uh, ah, the question I want to ask you, Mr. Corby, is, do you intend to take a trip outside the country? Why, uh, no. What makes you ask that? Well, now, we had an unfortunate experience. We made a $10,000 loan to a handkerchief manufacturer. Uh? Now, we don't know whether or not it was the nature of the business. Why, what happened? In six months, he blew. He blew. <laughs> oh, uh, stupid joke. <laughs> Either he had a cousin in Ecuador, and now that's where he absconded. Now, I hope you don't have any relatives outside the country. Oh, uh, why, uh, 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 no, of course not. Ah, bonsoir, bonsoir, ah, cousin Cole. Oh, uh, <laughs> dry cleaners. Now, uh, about the loan, Mr. Dry. I'll, uh, I'll open it this time. I kiss you on both cheeks. Mm -hmm. You stop that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, excuse me. What's going on here? Uh, I am Monsieur Colby's cousin. His cousin? Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> uh, cousin Colby, when are you coming to visit with us? Uh, we are dying to see you. Uh, cousin Colby, talk to me. <laughs> cousin Colby, stop sharpening that razor. <laughs> Pardon me, uh, what part of France are you from? Uh, London. <laughs> London is in England. Uh, Madrid? Madrid is in Spain. Uh, where is Pomona? <laughs> are you sure that you are a Frenchman? Oh, you do not believe me. I show you. I roll up my pant leg. Voila, what you see? A garter. What it says on the garter? Well, that proves I'm a Frenchman. <laughs> well, well, in that case, you'll surely understand what I'm saying. Jenny, say quoi? Voulez vous parlez vous, vous, Francais? <laughs> well, goodbye, Cousin Colby. The boat is leaving. <laughs> Ah, Miss Colby, I don't like this. I thought you had no relatives outside the country. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Grimes, I can explain everything. Please excuse me just a minute. Oh, uh, Betty, Betty. Yes, Father. Betty, we can't tell Mr. Grimes. We've tried to deceive him, but we must stop now. Oh, I'll try, Father. Is this where Senior Colby leaves? <laughs> well, uh, I, I have no relatives in South America. Oh, but Cousin Colby, remember what we made up. I mean, how our families made up. Uh, pardon me, are you one of Mr. Colby's South American relatives? You see, I am a very rich bullfighter. I remember the last fight. We are in the middle of the arena. I look at the bull. The bull look at me. I look at the bull. The bull look at me. I look at the bull. The bull look at me. You want to know something? The bull is better looking than me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Uh, what part of South America are you from? Uh, uh, Colombia. Uh, what part of Colombia? Uh, Eastern Colombia. <laughs> Where about? Broadway at night. Cousin <laughs> Colby. Cousin Colby, uh, I know you haven't seen me in ten years, but put me down. All right. Of course, take me back inside the window. <laughs> Colby, is that a way to treat a relative of yours? Now I want to talk to him. Sit him down, wine him, and dine him. I think I go now. Why? You said wine me, dine me. Cousin Colby looks like he wants to shave me. So long. <laughs> Colby, there's something highly irregular about this. Uh, now, please, Mr. Grimes, have a cigar. I, I never saw these relatives before. What did you say, Miss Colby? I did have a relative. I never saw these cigars before. So Colby. Granis from the voyage, Latukas, Papuania, Prasdoya, and regards from Uncle Patrick. Another relative? That's right, Kiro. I haven't seen Uncle Colby for ten years. Let's eat. You haven't seen him for ten years, and the first thing you want to do is eat? That's right. Borscht is thicker than blood. <laughs> now you interest me very much. I've always wanted to... <laughs> I've always wanted to obtain the first-hand information about the USSR. USSR? Oh, oh, I get it. That's Russia spelled backwards. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> I've always been very interested in the Russian experiment. What do you mean, experiment? I had a mother and father just like you did. <laughs> yes, now, uh, Jeff, what did you do in Russia? Uh, me? I'm the greatest actor in Moscow. I play gangster parts. Listen. You will listen to wise guy, see? From whom you get your vodka from whom, huh? See, whom, huh? Whom? <laughs> well, I was wonderful. Our great critic, Yasha Fiddler, he gave me the highest award. Four bogus and a boatman. <laughs> now, this, this has gone far enough, Mr. Colby. And what I've seen tonight is enough. You're not getting any loans from my bank. Oh, then give me back my cigar. And for making a fool out of me, I'm going to break every cigar in this box. Did you hear that, Mr. Colby? Yes, and for making a fool out of me, Mel Blank, I'm going to break every bone in your box. <laughs> Banker Grimes gave Mr. Colby the loan, and now your girl Betty won't have to leave town. Mel, that's wonderful. Yes, Professor Pochnick, for a minute, I thought I was going to be killed. Well, what saved you? Well, Mr. Grimes turned, uh, Grimes turned out to be an amateur actor himself, and, and he enjoyed my performance. A Pochnick pupil pleases people. And now uh, you want that I should act out the gangster again, eh? Uh, yeah. All right. You will listen, wise guy, see? From who you get new vodka from who, ha, see? Fine. Well, is that what you wanted to learn, Mr. Grimes? Yes, Mel. I'll see if I have it right. Give a listen, wise guy, see? From who you're getting your vodka from? Who? Ha, ha, ha. Mel Blank, 
We'll be back in just a minute. You call Gates to powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. You call Gates from to powder. It's tragic, but true, that a little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, deprives many a girl of romance. Anyone can be a victim of unpleasing breath, even you. So it's important always to be on your guard against this social handicap. That's why we recommend this daily practice. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. This is Mel Blank saying thanks for listening. Good night, Andy. That's all, folks. <laughs> Eastern, reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for breakfast, sweet, and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap films. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to Dulling Soap Film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Ladies, now more and more fats and oils are needed to make more and more of the things we need so badly. Your butcher pays you a high price for every pound of waste fat you take to him. So do fill a tin and turn it in. Remember, Mel Blanc at the same time every Tuesday night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.